Welcome to another micro tangent, and today I'm trying to film a video with my Commodore pet and failing miserably because this thing has just been giving me one problem after another, and right now it's the keyboard. So the Commodore PET is one of those oh so lovely computers that has the rubber pad keys. And if you know anything about those, you'll know that those lose conductivity over time, meaning they don't work. And I thought that's what the problem was going to be until I got to two keys that are now suspiciously working, but haven't been working up to this point and found out that wasn't the issue. Now these carbon pads just work by shorting across multiple contacts on each letter that is on the keyboard. And you can make this work with pretty much anything. In this case, I have my multimeter set here to measure current. And if I short across one of these, I can see how much current it uses, but I can also make it depress a key. Now, if I use my multimeter here in a resistance measurement and disconnect this keyboard from the computer, we can measure something else. Now, this is a one-sided PCB, but Commodore couldn't fit everything they needed to in one layer of copper, and they used all of these cheater traces on here. Uh, I'm not sure what material these actually are. I have a suspicion that they are silver under there because they don't look like carbon. But the thing about these traces is, is that they are adhered onto the circuit board after it's made. They're not part of the initial fabrication process, which means that they aren't the most reliable. And herein lies my problem. So if we measure this section of the silver trace there, which we can do from here to here, we can see we're getting, you know, 10-ish ohms around there. And if we measure some other sections, like say that one, we get about the same again. But the real problem is this one right here. If I measure from here to there, we're going to see, ooh, kilo ohms. Now that's not good. And this particular trace here has likely lifted on either this side or this side underneath of the solder mask that they put on there. And it's just not going to work anymore, even though it was putting on a good show there and may even pretend to work here. Nope, it's had enough for now. And it's not given me any key presses. So this particular trace here has failed and I need to bypass it. Now these extra traces on top of the copper layer aren't all that uncommon. Roland especially seems to be very fond of them and they wouldn't usually be difficult to repair. The problem is, is that this is a keyboard and the mechanical area above this is pretty important. So there is not a lot of room to be fitting wires or letting them bounce around and get in the way. So I want to try and use a different method to fix that. Enter copper tape. Copper tape is one of those things that just almost feels too good to be true. This particular example here is a piece of, I'm feeling about eight millimeter, conductive adhesive copper tape, and it is in fact double-sided adhesive. Now, the great thing about copper tape is that it's copper, the same as the circuit board, and you can solder to it. But in this particular case, that may not be necessary because all I have to do is really go from this pad here to this one right there. So it might actually be possible for me to just do this, and fix the keyboard. That might be it. And if we measure the resistance between the two pads now, perfect. That is exactly what we're looking for. And that was just about the easiest possible repair you could make. But I don't know if I want to just leave it like that or if I should solder it down. So I probably need to do that. Plus I think I shorted that one right there. So let me pull this up and let's try and do this a little more cleanly. Let's go ahead and take a better look at applying a piece of copper tape. So the first thing I'm going to do here is measure how long this actually needs to be. So we can put it right there to right there, which would give it about that. And just cut that, double check. That should be perfect. Okay. Now this time I'm going to be a bit more careful with how I place it and make sure that I have room to apply a little bit of solder afterwards because I would like to make sure 
that it is fully secured on there. So I'm going to start out by just barely covering that pad a little bit on that side and then doing the same thing on this side. Now I know I can actually bring it over oops, slightly. There we go. Now there's no reason I have to take off the protective layer, but I don't need it. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. Now I could also thin this down a bit because I don't need that much, but that would just be a little bit of unnecessary extra work. Now what I really want to do here is make sure that these contacts uh, right here and right here are really solid. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of solder to bridge that gap. Now to do this more effectively, I'm going to put down just a tad bit of flux so it can bridge. And then I will tin my iron and just very quickly tap that. Flux is having a hard time getting through the adhesive. There we go. That's looking perfect. Now let's do the other side. And that looks good. Because I moved this keyboard around, I felt it was a better idea to have redundant connections. And there we go. I covered it back up with the paper so it can't get dirty on the adhesive and it's working perfectly. And after getting it back together, those keys are working just fine as well as all the other keys around them. So the repair was a success and it didn't cause any clearance issues. Now I personally would highly recommend picking up some copper tape. It's just one of those nice things to have around in case you think of a use for it. Like for example, I was able to repair a Timex Sinclair 1000 keyboard ribbon cable by attaching copper tape to the broken off ribbon cable and soldering wires over to the PCB. It's working fine to this day. So it's just really handy stuff. Well, I hope that was helpful to someone. If you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, that's it. I'll see you next time.